Hello, hello, hello! OMG, welcome back to my channel. I am so happy that you are here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. We're going to switch gears a little bit this week because you can see I have a mess of a kitchen. I'm just going to be real. I'm failing at the cleaning uh, game. You know, I tried the organized mom cleaning routine. I did it for two weeks and I fell off the wagon. So anyways, in this video, we're going to get this kitchen cleaned up and I have a few projects that I really need to finish. And if I don't dedicate some time to it, they're just going to get keep getting put on the back burner. My family room is not terrible, although I still have the girls dang Easter baskets up there on the bookshelves. See them? There they are. So I'm going to have them take care of it. It's June, so it's high time to get rid of the Easter baskets until next Easter. And Yes, the blankets. The blankets are still sitting here. Oh my gosh. So we're going to take care of a few things today. If you are new and you just found me, I am so very happy that you are here. Would you please say hello to me and let me know that you are new down in the comment section. I would love to welcome you and say hello back to you. And if you are already subscribed, thank you so much for coming back to another video. So we're going to get this kitchen cleaned up. But my first line of business is going to be some projects that I've been wanting to do in the house. And the first one we're going to tackle are some DIY blinds. We are in Viv's room. If you caught her room makeover, I just adore the purple color she picked for her walls. But she needs some sun blocking blinds in her room or something just to give her more privacy. And it's just not in the budget right now to do actual blind installation throughout the house. So we're going to try these. All right, I'm already seeing a problem, but we're going to try it and we're going to see. Oh, let me climb up here. All right, so this would be the ideal place to put this, but it is too narrow. So I'm going to have to put it inside here. And what I'm worried about is that the shade is going to hit this. So it's not going to lay flat. <sighs> I didn't think about that. You can mount them on the outside. I just watched a video. It goes above here and then pulls down, which probably the curtains would cover any like pullover. Um... I didn't order them long enough because I wanted them on the inside. <laughs> All right, we're just going to try it. If it looks terrible, it looks terrible. Like, this is how we learn. All right, this is what it looks like once you open it. It had the instructions right in it, which seem very simple. You do it the exact width because the, it's, the deduction is already included that is needed. And it's measured. So whatever length you are, you just cut there on both sides. And then um, you pull this off and it's got the sticky. No, oh, you can't see. You pull this off and it's got the sticky and it's supposed to adhere. All right, we're gonna try it. All right, so I ordered these from Amazon. They're called Ready Shades and you just cut them to size, it says, with a standard kitchen knife. So that's what I am going to do. I think a straight razor would work better. I have this little one, but the blade wasn't long enough. So I'm just using a kitchen knife. This is a supposed to be simple DIY. So I'm just using my kitchen knife. I got a sharper one. I really need new kitchen knives or I need to sharpen mine or something because they're not great. So I'm cutting it just like it says to do. And I am not experienced in any DIY, so I'm like highly nervous to screw this up. I'm giving you the real-time view of how this is cutting. It's not terrible, but again, a straight razor probably would have been better had I had one. 
And I just had like, the only way you learn is by doing. And I was like, Jody, if you screw it up, these cost $40. No, I do not want to waste $40. But that is a very affordable option for a DIY on blinds. So we're just going to try it and see what happens. Once you turn them over on their side, they are a little easier to cut through. And again, my knives are not sharp. So if you have nice, sharp knives, it probably would be even easier for you. So basically, I just cut one side and then kind of turn it over, match it up so that I can cut the other end and that it, you know, it goes through because the other side has already been cut, which that I didn't explain that very well, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. The Ready Shade has videos and I'll leave the link down in the description box, but I watched a few tutorial videos and it looked simple enough. So I thought, let me just give this a dang try. And I'm not even asking for my husband's help. I'm just doing it my darn self. All right, we got that done. Uh, it didn't work out super great. I definitely wish I would have had a razor blade. This side's fine. It's pretty straight on both. Um, but the back side of each, I don't know if I'm supposed to keep that styrofoam in there. So I am, whatever, moment of truth. We're going to pull this off and we are going to hang it up. Let's hope that I <laughs> measured this correctly. So I'm pulling off the um, little strip and it has like this very sticky adhesive on it. I am sticking it right to um, the window trim. If you didn't want to do that, you could put a piece of wood up there or something, but I'm sticking mine right to my window trim and pressing it in and holding it and all that good stuff. Okay, and I can see where the deduction is built in because even though I measured it and cut it exactly how I measured, I mean, my measurements could have been off, but there is a little gap on each side, so that is good. This hides my imperfection of cutting. I don't know where the other side went. All right, moment of truth. <laughs> Does it work? comes down it's a little like you kind of got to pull it a little bit but it does what I needed to do for a temporary solution it does see if you can see I don't know if the camera will pick it up just a teeny little bit comes out right here but let's put the curtain rod back up oh Viv is gonna be so happy so happy OMG, I cannot believe it worked. I'm so, so darn excited. I just, oh, you know, sometimes you get scared to do things when you're unsure and you just got to take the leap and you just got to give it a try. And then sometimes you just got to clap for your dang self. There is a lot of resistance when you pull them down, but they go up just like so smooth and easy. Okay, they went up so easy, but I, I mean, I wanna share all of the things with you just in case you need a maybe temporary or just a very affordable option versus having to get like blinds installed, which that is, you know, on our list. But right now, this is what I could do. It's hanging. It's hanging on this side. Where this side closed all the way up, it's, I don't know. I don't know if I damaged it. I don't, I don't know. I wonder if it's because this side has this. 
wouldn't think that would have anything to do with that. I got to look for it. I searched through everything. I couldn't find it. Anyways, nobody's really going to notice that. Viv's probably not even going to notice that there's blinds up until I pull them down. I'm so excited. I found that little end cap. It was inside one of the plastic pieces and I cut the other shade and I'm going to install the other one as well. I really don't know anything about blinds, so I don't know if one side is supposed to hang down a teeny little bit like that, or if maybe it's the way I stuck it on here. But this is sped up, so even though it looks like I didn't like press it in there very long, I did. I held it for like a couple of minutes up there just to make sure it adhered. And I got the second one up as well. Oh my gosh. I'm just so, so darn excited that I was able to do this with nobody's help. That may seem silly to some of y'all, but this was a big win for me. All I know is I'm Wonder Woman right now. I am Wonder Woman. I just DIY'd some blinds in my daughter's room. I don't care if you saw something that I should have done different. I did it! I'm Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman now has to go get in the shower. <laughs> okay, I wrote myself a little list of things that I wanted to try to get accomplished in this video. And you can see the blinds were the top one. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to check that right off the list. We're going to check it. We're going to check it again. We're going to check it again. And you know what? I'm even going to give myself a little star. There is no bigger confidence boost than to do something you were nervous to do or unsure of how to do it and accomplish it. And you know what else? There's no bigger confidence boost than trying something that you wanted to do that you were unsure of and making a mistake because that is how we learn and get better. So I feel like I could just accomplish any dang thing right now. <laughs> so the next thing on my list was I wanted to make some homemade vanilla extract. Most of you know, if you've been around for a while, that I am a couponer. And we had a deal not too long ago, a few months ago, where I ended up getting some free and actually moneymaker vodka. And I had several, well, not several, I had a few people tell me that you could make your own vanilla extract. And I love using vanilla extract for baking. It is dang expensive to buy. And I think I got three bottles of the Sky Vodka for totally free and actually made money getting it. And we just are not that big of drinkers. So I'm going to use some of the free vodka I got and make some DIY vanilla extract. So I ordered all of my supplies from Amazon and you just saw all of those little bottles that I was washing. So as I've washed them all and set them out to air dry, so as those are drying, I'm going to work on cleaning up this mess of a kitchen. And I watched I don't even know how many tutorials. Like you can literally figure out how to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> by searching. My favorite quote is by Tony Robbins. People don't lack resources. They lack resourcefulness. So hopefully the vanilla extract will turn out good, but I won't know for quite a few months. Look at this. So weird. An Amazon package showed up with those mosquito head nets. I did not order them. They are not on my uh, Amazon order list. I have no idea. I'm guessing it was some type of uh, mistake through Amazon. I don't even know what to do with the dang things. So as we're doing all of these DIY projects in this video, I would love to hear any DIY projects that you're currently working on or maybe what was the scariest one that you ever decided to undertake and how did it turn out? Did it turn out fantastic or did you learn a ton of lessons from it? So I told you in the intro that I was failing at the cleaning game <laughs> because I feel like I am. Although I never really view anything as a failure. I either win at something or I learn. 
Donna Jean was Elvis Presley for her wax museum, and she made those glasses with little sideburns. I'll pop a picture up on the screen. It was the cutest thing ever. I couldn't get her to, to wear a wig. <laughs> but she wore her sunglasses with her sideburns, and I ordered her like a black jean jacket and a little um, black and white striped shirt. So she would kind of look like, you know, the jailhouse rock days of Elvis. And this is my girl's last week of school. Let me know when your kids get out of school. I feel like some schools get out way earlier than we do. Uh, all right. I really need to clean this dang sink. It is in bad shape. So I'm pulling out the pink stuff. If you caught my oven cleaning, I use the pink stuff in my oven and this stuff works so fantastic. I love having a lighter colored sink, but it is a little bit challenging to keep it clean looking. I am not a fan of stainless steel uh, appliances or um, sinks. So even though it's a little more challenging to keep this clean uh, and maybe stainless steel or I don't know, I don't have any experience because I'm not a fan. When we do replace the sink, which is on my list to do for the kitchen, I will be getting another light colored sink because that's just what I prefer. Let me know what you love. And another upgrade I'm so excited about is getting a new faucet with the sprayer on it so I don't have to use a cup to rinse everything. Everything will come in time, though. I am beyond grateful that I have running water because not everybody does. All right, let's take a look. This is what my sink looked like before I got in there with the pink stuff. You can just see I tried to scrub it with a sponge and some dish soap beforehand, and those marks were just not coming out. And so after the pink stuff, look at how beautiful it looks again. I'm telling you, I love the pink stuff. I only use it when I have something that's really hard to get out, but it works so fantastic. I also love the Dawn Power Wash that you see right there, but I tried that and it did not get those marks out. And then I got this little thing from TJ Maxx when I took the girls shopping. I feel so fancy. I got a sponge holder now. All right, my bottles are dry enough, so we're gonna DIY some vanilla extract. I bought everything off of Amazon besides the vodka, of course. Uh, so I got these vanilla beans, and I've, like I said, I watched several tutorials. Some of them said to cut the vanilla bean open so that the beans actually go into the jar. Some of them said, you don't have to do that. So I'm gonna cut one open that I'm putting in each jar. And then the other two, I'm not gonna cut open. I'm just gonna put the actual bean stalk, I guess that's what it's called, in the jar. And every video I watch seems to do it a little bit different, but it's all basically the same idea. You can add more, you can add less beans, all of that good stuff. When I opened this packet up, I had enough. If I split them, I put three in, I cut one stalk um, in thirds. So I put three and a third in each one of these jars. And these jars are eight ounce sizes. And the jar kit came with that little funnel. So I just, filled them all up and we're going to hope and pray that we get some delicious vanilla extract. I mean, if you were to go to the store and buy real vanilla extract, not imitation in an eight ounce jar, I don't even know how expensive that would be. 50 or $60, maybe even more. The jar set was $20, $19.99 and it came with nine jars and the vanilla bean, the one packet I ordered was $15. So it cost me $35. And you could also do these as, I think they would be great gifts to give away. Because I don't think I'll go through <laughs> three things of eight ounce jar of vanilla beans. Uh, it would probably take me, or vanilla extract, it would probably take me years. And out of that one bottle of Sky Vodka, I was able to fill these three um, glass jars. And I'm just going to put them in my pantry. 
I'm also gonna label them. I put the label of the dates. You can already see they're turning colors. I think you're supposed to shake them up a few times a day for like the first week and then every time you look at them, shake them. So another thing crossed off our list. Okay, it's been quite a while since I've done my bedroom makeover and I have not hung my OMG picture. So we're gonna go ahead and do that today. So the painter made this picture for me, which I thought was absolutely the sweetest thing ever. And I'm just using command strips to put this up here on the wall. She took the wallpaper she removed from my bedroom walls and the wallpaper she removed from my master bathroom. And I told you guys in that video that I had this picture reframed at Michael's. This is a picture my grandmother painted many years ago that I absolutely adore. And Michael's did an amazing job of framing it. So now I have my grandmother's picture up and my OMG picture up. It is my favorite thing to walk into my bedroom and see that beautiful picture that my grandmother made and have it on display. All right, we get to cross another thing off the list. And you know what? I'm giving myself a star on this one because I'm not super experienced at hanging pictures and I did it. Come up here real quick. Just brought Viv home from school. Yeah. Come up here real quick. Tell me if you notice anything different in your room. Not noticing anything? Can you take it in to look like your hair? <laughs> You're cold. You're cold. You're getting hotter. Nope. You're getting hotter. You're on fire. Bro, what? You're on fire. There's nothing. <laughs> Is it out here? Not really. Want me to show you? Do you like it? Mm -hmm. well, how was I supposed to notice that? I, I know, you would never notice it. <laughs> Yay, she loves them. All right, we are having a family gathering and I'm gonna make a super simple, easy, delicious dessert that I thought I would share with you. So I got a can of crushed pineapples. I don't, I've made this thing for years, although I haven't made it in probably a few years. So it's just one can of crushed pineapple and then one packet of vanilla pudding. Let me know if you've ever made this. It is so light and not a super sweet dessert. It is just a great dessert for summer. And then I have some Cool Whip here. So if you like pineapple and you need a very quick and easy summer dessert to take to maybe any summer parties you have, definitely give this a try. So it calls for one cup of Cool Whip, but I put a little extra scoop in there as well. And you just mix that in with the crushed pineapple and um, vanilla pudding. Now, if you're feeling really motivated or fancy, you could make your own angel food cake. I was not feeling either. <laughs> so I bought one at my local grocery store and you just cut it into three separate pieces. And then you're just going to layer each piece with that filling you made. And you wanna make sure to put like extra so it's kind of like hanging over the sides when you put each layer of the angel food cake. And I'm not like super precise with how I cut it, but you can be if you want. If you want every single strip of the angel food cake to be totally like the same size, <laughs> I just eyeball it and cut it and stick the next one right on top of the layer that I just put the filling in. 
And as long as you really stack the layers like you're supposed to so that it kind of comes out the side, it uses up pretty much all of the um, filling mix that you made. I had two little spoonfuls left that I ate. And since our party is not until the next day, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in a cake container and stick it in the refrigerator. And then tomorrow, right before the party, I will top the um, top of the cake with some fruit. And you can do whatever kind of fruit you want. I usually just do strawberries. So I put it on this really pretty cake stand and I'm washing my strawberries and cutting them up and putting them right on the top. And although this cake stand is really pretty, it's kind of too big <laughs> for the cake itself. So I decided just to make it look a little fancier and fill in the space that I would just line the bottom of it with strawberries as well. And it turned out really pretty. Everybody was like, wow, did you make that? It looks way fancier than it is. And the whole thing got eaten. I'm not gonna finish everything that was on my list in this video, but there are just a couple more things that I wanted to tackle. So this door you see right here is the garage door and that is where we come in. So this is the area we always see first when we walk into our house, along with any company that comes over. Nobody ever uses the front door. And I had bought this picture at Ollie's a couple of months ago and initially bought it thinking I would put it in my family room when my family room gets painted but I decided it would be better suited here since this is the first area that everybody sees when they walk into our house, including us, and I wanted to set the intention and the energy of what I want my house to be. And then the next thing that I desperately needed to do was get rid of this dang runner rug. It is like 10 years old, it's falling apart, it doesn't match any decor style that I like personally. And it's just time for it to go. And I went ahead and bought myself a new runner rug that I'm so excited about. So of course, since this is the door that always gets used, I need to clean up the floor because it's got a lot of dirt, even though we take off our shoes. When we come in the house, we still track all kinds of things in from outside. So I'm going to mop not mop i'm going to sweep this area up before i lay down the new rug i got thank you so so much for spending this time with me today i hope this video inspired you or gave you a little bit of motivation to maybe tackle a couple of things around your house that you have been putting off and i just want you to know that i appreciate you so much and speaking of decor style now that i'm actually doing decorating and doing things to my house, I have finally discovered my decorating style. It's called Grand Millennial. And when I told Grayson about it and showed her some pictures, she's like, oh, that's like cool granny style. <laughs> I'll pop a couple pictures up on the screen. There's an account I follow on Instagram called Social Society. Oh my gosh. I like this makes my heart happy. This is absolutely my style. And I know it's not everybody's style. My husband is definitely not grand millennial. He is super neutral. He would have everything in the house gray and black, and that would be it. It just does not make me happy. Colors evoke emotion in people, and some people totally thrive in a neutral environment. I do not. So these are the two runner rugs that I chose. I decided to get two because I wanted to see which one I liked better. But this one has faux fur on it. So it's super duper soft. I love these so much. So I'm going to try them out both in this space and see which one I like better. I'd love to hear if you liked this style of video where we just kind of do like a hodgepodge of different things, different little projects that needed to be done. These are just things I have been putting off for far too long. And I decided that to hold myself accountable to get some of the dang projects done, I would just make it into a video. There's lots more little things that I need to get done as well. And some of the things on my to-do list that I didn't get to in this video. So I may bring you another video like this. 
this rug, I know the lighting right here is super terrible because I don't have any lights here, but oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I love this rug so, so much. I think it's so bright and airy and beautiful looking. I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to try the other rug in this space. Next week, I'll definitely be bringing you another decluttering video because I have to stay on that journey. But when I'm working on these big decluttering projects and room makeovers, you know, the little things just slip by the wayside and the little things are really what make the big difference. So I'm so happy that I got this video out and all of these little projects done. And now I'm going to lay down this second rug, but I had to go grab a piece of paper towel because there was something like when I unfolded the rug, there was something on there that I was like, oh my gosh, is that a dead bug? <laughs> Which really probably wouldn't have been a big deal, but I was just like, oh, I hope this isn't tracking bugs into my house. It wasn't. It was like a couple pieces of like, I don't even know, um, like fabric, not from the rug because it was a different color. But anyways, I'm glad it wasn't a dead bug. <laughs> this rug is seriously so soft. Uh, I'm definitely thinking this is the rug for this space right here. You can't see right, but right when you walk in the garage door, the um, doorway right there is our half bath and I've got the vanity in there has it's like a navy blue it's a darker color and then I've got like a backsplash up this really kind of ties in to the bathroom decor that I have up and I really really love this rug I think it is so pretty again I know it's not going to be everybody's style but definitely feel free to let me know what you think of it so I've never had a rug over here by my kitchen sink, which I really need one because the floor gets wet from doing dishes and things like that. So I'm going to put this one over here. This area of the kitchen is brighter. And so I think this rug will look pretty over here. The only thing I'm worried about is it too big of a rug for this area. I did scooch it in more so it's not hanging off the end of the counter. But let me know if it's too big. I'm probably just going to keep it. But let me know if you think it's too big for this area. All right, so I got several projects accomplished in this video throughout a few days of work. And I just want to show you now what the vibe is when you walk into my house from the garage, which again is where we come in and where all guests come in. So you've got this beautiful rug and those creases will, you know, go out after the rug's been sitting and stuff. And we, anyways, I love the rug. I love the rug. I think it is so, so pretty. And when you're walking in eye level, this is what you see. You see my sign. Always have an attitude of gratitude. I am completely obsessed with gratitude. It has changed my life. I think I said earlier in the video, I'm grateful for running water. It is the little things that I am so grateful for every day. And so that sets the intention and the energy of the house. So again, thank you so, so much for spending this time with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and I'm gonna see you again next week. I hope you have a great day. Bye.